uh, our next presentation is uh, from uh, Barbara Kirby. Uh, the, title, the title of the presentation is, Can the Implementation of Innovative HR Practices Reduce the Effects of the Cycle? Barbara is a Senior Director, uh, Workforce Development uh, with the Mining Industry Human Resources Council. She is responsible for leading the Mining Industry Human Resources Council's uh, activities relating to the strategic priority of skills, learning, and mobility, and contributes to the Council's labor market information research programs. She's uh, formerly, she has been the manager of accreditation and certification of the Canadian Aviation, Aviation Maintenance Council. She holds a master's degree in economics. Over, the, over 20 years of experience in Canada and abroad, uh, including Indonesia, Laos, the Philippines, Ghana, Botswana, India, Nepal, and Jordan. Recently, uh, Barbara has been recognized with the 2011 CIM Distinguished Lecturer Award for leadership and outstanding contributions in the development of the Canadian mining industry's first national worker certification program for underground miners, surface miners, and minerals processing operators. Please uh, uh, join me in welcoming, welcoming uh, Barbara Kirby. So thank you very much. Um, I'm really happy, actually, to be here to make this um, presentation. Those of you who joined us this morning at the uh, plenary, not to worry. Uh, there'll only be a few uh, small overlaps in my presentation uh, um, at this morning's session uh, and now. Um, really, what I'm here to talk to you about is another um, uh, initiative of the Mining Industry Human Resources Council, which is all around the development of um, a program called Mere Innovate. And our question, and I think um, following along from uh, the two previous presentations, um, actually m makes a lot of sense. What we're trying to figure out is, um, so we've seen this, this huge cyclical um, uh, nature of our industry, not only um, at the mercy of highly uh, fluctuating uh, commodity prices, but also um, uh, employment uh, fluctuating um, a lot. And how can we address the kinds of questions that are being brought out of, around um, engagement with, uh, with our universities um, and keeping uh, young people interested in working with us? So um, if you'll bear with me, I don't think there'll be too much repetition with, um, with uh, uh, some of the um, sorry, with some of the presentations that have been uh, made to date. Um, this is just an introduction to who I am, so um, that's already been covered. Uh, I'd like to just quickly go over um, who the Mining Industry Human Resources Council is. For those of you who are not familiar with us, we are a national not-for-profit organization. Uh, we have an 18-person board of directors, which is made up of uh, a variety of different industry stakeholder groups, including employers, um, labor unions, uh, educators, uh, provincial associations. So we try to engage all of those stakeholders in developing the solutions that we uh, we work on. We have um, uh, 200 um, plus industry uh, leaders who volunteer their time to work on the initiatives together with us. Um, and I think we're a fairly good example of a private-public partnership um, in that uh, some of our funding comes through Human Resources and Skills Development Canada and others come directly uh, through contributions from the mining industry, um, including the Mining Association of Canada. Um, so what do we do? Uh, we look at a variety of um, different sources of information uh, and we help to identify what human resources challenges the industry um, is facing and then again using the this collaborative approach and bringing uh, folks from all different um, aspects of, of the industry um, together to try and create some um, uh, solutions to those issues. 
So um, there are three basic programming priorities. MIR uh, looks at attraction, retention, and transition of our uh, of our workforce. So this is all about building these tools that um, that help to create workplace diversity, uh, attracting underrepresented groups, um, increasing and retaining uh, our access to talented um, employees, and to promote careers in the industry. Um, and then the skills learning and mobility initiative which I talked about this morning uh, around the Canadian Mining Credentials Program. It's all around uh, defining national occupational standards about um, providing certification and accreditation to training programs. Uh, and then the third piece is all around industry um, research and, and specific research around human resources um, and the different aspects of the challenges around managing the human resources in our industry. So what's the challenge here that we're about to talk to today? Here's a little bit of a repeat from this morning. I show this slide because I think that it really uh, uh, clearly um, demonstrates the challenge that our industry faces in terms of being cyclical. As you can see, um, there's wide variations in total employment and the changes year over year in total employment in the industry are just huge swings. So I guess part of my message here this morning is is the recent downturn in commodity prices and the resulting um, temporary shutdowns and layoffs, those should not have been a huge surprise to our industry. We've been facing this kind of huge economic swings over the course of at least this 45-year period that we have data for. So it's not... A, it, it isn't and it shouldn't be a huge surprise. The challenge for industry is how do we go about managing those swings? And I think, um, I think uh, Nathan probably pointed out um, your quote from the Queen's University folks is that, you know, uh, uh, the universities are kind of saying, well, hang on a second. We, we know that this business cycle is happening. Um, we've got graduates. It takes us four years to get, you know, those people as a minimum through the program. And then industry experiences a downswing. And then what happens to the grads from our programs? Then what happens is, Enrollment declines in those in those uh, in those programs, and when the industry is on an upswing and looking for more um, uh, skilled people coming out of the university programs, they're saying, "Where's the education system? Why aren't they responding to our needs?" Well, we need to we need to find and develop ways of managing those swings and those cycles. Um, not surprisingly, this is all being driven by the strong relationship between employment and commodity prices. So this just shows over the, you know, the, the reaction of the swing in sort of uh, late 2008, uh, early 2009, where, you know, the commodity prices dropped off and what you see is a two or three month lag and sure enough, employment drops off as well. So, you know, highly, uh, strongly related. Our, our regression analysis is showing about 80 percent in the variation in employment is actually directly linked to um, changes in, in, in the minerals and metals commodity price index. So, um, you know, it's not surprising that that's um, what's happening. So here's what I'm really um, here to talk about today is um, can innovative HR practices help um, to mitigate some of those impacts? And I think that uh, certain HR challenges that we face are, are made even more um, uh, challenging, I guess, um, by that business cycle in mining. Uh, things like attracting and retaining highly qualified workers, those knowledge workers that are graduating from the universities, um, building future industry leaders and retaining those leaders within our industry, even in the face of this broad economic swing. Um, succession planning and planning for that huge um, retirement bubble that's coming through that we've all we're all quite familiar familiar with, and then also enhancing industry's relationship with the underrepresented groups, and in particular, um, one of the case studies I'm going to talk about today is, uh, is about enhancing those um, and, the, and, and creating that social license to operate by enhancing our relationship with, um, with Aboriginal communities. Um, so what is Mere Innovate? Um, well, first of all, it's, um, it's actually a, uh, an online portal. It, uh, it's about sharing knowledge and, um, and 
innovative HR practices and initiatives. It basically aims to showcase those um, uh, activities and innovative practices. It allows employers to create um, and, and um, showcase a new image for the mining industry as employers of choice. Um, and it also helps to create an environment where there's an exchange and a sharing of, um, of different approaches that are being used out there. Um, so basically, the idea was to develop a compendium of innovative HR practices and then also to build a community of practice online. So um, the innovative practice database is housed on the MIR website. Um, and so anybody who wishes to visit that can find it under um, uh, mir.ca. Um, but then also to build a community of um, interaction between uh, people who are posting to Mir Innovate as a site um, and allow discussion forums to develop. Um, basically, this was then promoted by um, uh, creating a media partnership with the Canadian Business Journal, uh, writing magazine articles um, in the CIM magazine, which um, the, I saw the most recent one was out there. There's an, another um, innovative practice that's been showcased there. Um, uh, opportunities like this one to uh, to speak to groups of, uh, of industry folks. Um, creating media advisories and then also uh, using social uh, media like LinkedIn to create this sort of synergistic um, approach to these things. Um, there are, were basically, there were four areas that we invited um, employers to provide um, case studies of some of their innovative practices. Uh, one around the work environment and culture, another one around learning and development, uh, a third one around um, uh, the reputation of their organization as an employer of choice. And the, uh, the fourth one, which we haven't received any entries on yet, is around compensation rewards and recognition programs. Um, and if anyone uh, was in attendance at the, uh, at the um, uh, plenary this morning, you'll know something about the program that MIR is actually putting in place to recognize workers in our industry. So again, the question goes back to can the implementation of these innovative HR practices um, actually help to reduce the effects of the cycle on our HR um, management strategies? Well, I'm going to showcase four of the case studies. I'm going to go through them fairly quickly, and I will, in fact, um, warn you that um, because these are case studies that are submitted by the employers themselves, I can't really answer any detailed questions around what specific practices are, but I ju I'd just like to highlight a few of these and how they address those challenges that I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Um, this particular one looks at um, uh, career succession planning, and it was submitted by Vale. Um, uh, basically, it's talking about career, it's talking about succession planning uh, for the management level. And essentially, it had four broad, or sorry, three broad um, objectives. One is around um, the retention component of, um, of managing your human resources, um, and in particular, focusing on professional development and opportunities for promotion uh, from within the talent pool. Um, it looks at um, offsetting the skills losses, so recognizing uh, what skills are going to be um, sort of uh, leaving your workforce um, as a result of retirement. So, you know, really genuinely looking at offsetting that loss of uh, senior level people uh, leaving the industry. Um, and the third piece around ensuring that the right people um, are in the right place at the right time with the right skills, which is, um, you know, sort of a, um, a, a recurring theme throughout uh, the process. This particular um, uh, case study, these are the impacts that have been reported by the employer themselves, uh, essentially identifying and maintaining um, their future leaders within their talent pool. Um, planning to replace retiring talent is a, is a key component um, and, a, and a key um, uh, effort of, of uh, sorry, evidence of the impact of the program. 
Being able to share talent across business units was another uh, uh, key outcome of the program. Um, that, that professional development becomes more available as a strong retention. And if you saw my presentation this morning, you, you saw um, uh, some quotations from people who have been involved in the program saying, you know, it, having opportunities to further develop and hone my skills is going to make me more interested in staying within the minerals and, and, and metals industry. And then finally, um, being the, the future possibility of being able to link this succession planning into performance management strategies um, within the company itself. The second showcase is around um, uh, some work, innovative work that's being done at Cameco right now. Um, this leads directly to address the issue around um, attracting and retaining um, new, new graduates and also uh, strengthening the relationship between um, the industry and our university's research and development uh, programs. So um, essentially Cameco submitted this, um, uh, this case study where they are actually providing uh, financial support to, to sabbatical programs being actually um, taken, uh, working directly with Cameco on expanding research and development, on solving um, technological problems, on improving uh, productivity and innovation. Uh, so in each case, um, there is an opportunity for um, professors who are going on sabbatical to actually conduct their sabbatical research working together with Cameco, and there is a, a financial incentive to support that. Um, they have also found that uh, uh, this has created a much stronger relationship between uh, universities um, and their research and um, and Cameco as a company. Uh, much better innovation and technology is taking place um, because they're able to avail themselves of uh, the advanced skills of um, the professor that's on uh, sabbatical. Um, there's very early contact now happening um, with students who will eventually graduate from the program and in fact in a number of cases the students are actually um, focusing their research, their graduate level research on uh, creating some innovative solutions to challenges that are being faced. Um, and then finally there's um, uh, further opportunities for um, faculty and for students to actually get um, out in, in the operating environment and to you know develop and uh, test some of new technologies that they may be developing. A uh, third case study looks at um, Norant Resources and the work that they've been doing in terms of um, Aboriginal engagement and using social media to uh, enhance that relationship. Uh, they created an online portal that's being used to engage the communities. Um, the idea is to better understand um, the concerns and issues and goals of that community in relationship to the mining activities taking place, uh, particularly in the Ring of Fire. Um, and also to share information on how the company is operating and what um, specific uh, uh, issues or challenges they may be facing. Um, again, some evidence of impacts. There's been uh, 60,000 views. There's 250 actual uh, members on this uh, Norant site. Um, an interesting uh, uh, offshoot of this is not only uh, is this serving as a resource for the community to discuss mining issues, but it's also becoming rapidly becoming a way of promoting um, the community's own activities, and for example, in tourism or in in um, in crafts. So um, the the social portal or the social media is being used um, in a much broader sense than just um, focusing directly on the mining activities. And um, there seems to be a significant exchange between the community and other stakeholder groups from um, uh, perhaps outside of the immediate um, mining industry. But uh, the portal is seeing significant amount of action and a, and a very positive response from the community. Um, the last uh, showcase I'd like to do, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> the last showcase I'd like to, um, to talk about briefly is Gold Corp's work on uh, a supervisory and, and leadership development. So in particular, this is focusing on developing the management, further 
in the management and, and leadership skills in the supervisor level. <clears throat> Could I have a glass of water, please? Sorry. <coughs> So um, the idea here is around developing cohorts of um, supervisors who will move further up um, the, the line into the management um, and leadership uh, uh, scale. So the idea is to develop those skills amongst, um, amongst supervisors. It's to enhance uh, Gold Corp's identity um, by linking directly into some of the pillar um, principles of the company's operations and then to identify that um, top talent and keep them moving um, and engaged with the company. So some evidence um, uh, coming so far, the, the, the story uh, and the evaluation is currently ongoing, but essentially there's um, early evidence of changing uh, people's management approach. Um, improving the leadership abilities of those supervisory level folks um, and in particular <coughs> very positive shifts in the level of engagement between supervisors and those that they are supervising um, and what is um, a, a really strong contributor is that this program is being uh, seen as having major uh, impacts on the alignment of management approaches with the company's priorities. So this, I, I would really like to take this time to compliment the following companies that are listed up here um, for participating in uh, contributing these things. Not only um, have they contributed these case studies, but they've actually opened up and perhaps even revealed some of their competitive ad advantage secrets in terms of being um, able to manage their human resources, look at issues related to retention, look at the connections with our universities, both the students and the faculty faculty. So um, I, I think that uh, there have been a significant number of Mere Innovate contributors and we're hoping that um, as a result of presentations like this there will be um, further uh, participation on that, uh, on that portal. Um, the information that you need to contact is, uh, is all here um, and you can certainly uh, contact my, uh, my colleagues at, uh, at Mir, and they will ensure that uh, any innovative practice practices you might want to contribute to this. Um, you have free access already to the um, uh, case studies that are currently on our website. And for those of you who are interested, you can contact our manager of marketing and communication uh, to get connected with the LinkedIn group um, to talk about the Mere Innovate stuff. I would just say in conclusion that I think that um, this kind of sharing of innovative HR practices are the types of things that can manage those challenges that we find exacerbated by the fact that mining has this enormous business cycle and I think that we're working towards um, trying to develop some collaborative solutions to managing um, that cycle. There, are there any questions for Barbara? Sure. Mike Chalkley from Sherrit. Uh, not really a question, more of a comment. Uh, your paper was entitled, um, Can the Implementation of uh, Innovative HR Practices Reduce the Effects of the Cycle? And clearly you showed there was a, a clear relationship between the, the, you know, the metal prices and, 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 the, and the, hiring of, the hiring and firing, shall I say. Yeah. I think you've got something even bigger here because I think we've heard from a number of presenters that one of the greatest challenges we face going forward is to, uh, is to meet the supply or the demand mm -hmm. for resources. And one of those key resources is obviously human resources. So I think this is even bigger because I think you've got a, a, a basis here that can help to meet that challenge irrespective of the cycles. We'll always have the cycles. Yeah. But I think underlying that or overlying that going forward, just, we're just going to have this great challenge to be able to meet the human resources that are required in the mining and metallurgical industry to, 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 to create the, the products that the world is going to demand over the next 20 or 30 years. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Are there any other comments or questions? 
Brenna Scoli from Volley. I'm very pleased to see you uh, showcasing uh, the uh, activities that we've been pursuing on the HR front uh, uh, in our organization. It has been a lot of work, but I just wanted to add um, it's not just for our managerial okay. uh, group of people. We've extended this program right down to the staff level. So everyone within Volley is uh, th going through a career and succession planning uh, on a global scale for our whole company. So that's the way we feel that uh, we want to recognize all of the, our employees. Just wanted to let you know. Oh, thank you okay. for that. Um, and and as I mentioned at the beginning, I I'm, I'm would never claim to be an expert on any of these innovative practices. These really are have been contributed. So I'm very happy that you were here to clarify that. Any other questions? Thank you. In that case, uh, let's uh, another applause to Barbara. Thank you.